Guys, it's time to build the 45th anniversary 934 from Tamiya. When this was released last year, people went crazy for it. I saw people buying as many as they could. Some people trying to flog them for double the price on like eBay and stuff like that. Well, that is where our future lies, Rodney. Second hand motors. This time next year, we'll be millionaires. But I didn't buy this to look at the box on a shelf. I bought it to build it and run it. And as much as it's a nice collectible kit, if you want to look at the box, you can just stick that on the wall. Now, okay, it's up to you what you do with it. Some people like to collect them and that's absolutely fine. Some people like to build them and just put them on a the shelf and not run them. And again, it's absolutely fine. It's up to you what you do with it. None of my stuff's a shelf queen. Even my ranger's been out and been bashed about on a beach. So what we're doing on this video, well, we're gonna build it. We're gonna build it and make it into an absolute beast. Well, I say beast. It's gonna make it look really cool. A bit different to a normal box art shelf queen bit. Oh, we don't take them out. I like the wheels it comes with, but we're not using them. We're having these deep dish Japanese style drift wheels that should give you an idea of what we're doing here and i mean the picture on the thumbnail is probably giving you a clue to what we're doing that'd be nice like printed on a t-shirt or something i'm going to try and do this a bit different to how i usually do these things and just chuck everything everywhere i will try and be a little bit more organized page one ball diff and gearbox done part three four five six and seven gearbox done well almost done and yes that is a castle motor 7700 kv powerful power monstrously powerful power power, ah! power, power, power. speed and power because it's such a crazy motor i have geared down a few teeth. I'm still not sure if this gearbox is going to uh, last. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then we got to do the front. Standard diff on the front, not a ball diff. I think we'll get up to just before doing the suspension. Let's do that all in a one. Surely that shouldn't flop about like that. There shouldn't be that much play. Come on. That can't be right. Just shows you two washers on the other side there and the um, stepped screw. I don't think that's right. We'll see. We'll see when we put it together. <laughs> So that is all I'm doing today. I've got some other stuff to get on with. Tomorrow I'm gonna to build the suspension and then hopefully have it all mounted up and have it at least rolling. And then it's the difficult job of doing the body. I'll be back tomorrow. And just like that, it's a new day. And it's time to do the suspension, which is pretty easy on these. Once you've done a few, it's pretty basic. I don't know if you can see it, but the little bumps on there where they come off the tree, is that the springs are a tight fit, so they will get stuck on there. Get it nice and flush. Should be just a case of one swipe with a knife and we're all good. Now you can use O-ring grease for this or like Tamiya say, it's just a drop of oil. Drop of oil in there. Two O-rings, one, two, cap, screw that on. Now what I do is just put a little one single drop there. Then you're gonna need your shaft and your uh, C-clip or E-clip or sir clip, whatever you wanna call it. I recommend a decent uh, pair of needle nose pliers. Put your piston on. I've gone for the one with the two holes in it. Uh, the instructions tell you on the one hole, but I want it. I want some slightly softer suspension. This is going to go perfect for this video, but how many people fly these things across the room and lose them? <laughs> Tiny bit of oil on your shaft, then your little shock limiters. One, 
two, podge that in there. Should move nice and freely. Then put your shock end on. Don't hold the shock shaft uh, like that. Put like a cover or something on it. But if you're careful, you won't damage the shock shaft, but it's not recommended. Throw the oil in. Use whatever oil you want. I'm just using the one supplied. Seems relatively thin, I'd say, I don't know, 20 weight. Important, the first time you push this piston up and down, it's gonna suck all that oil back down. Ready, look, it's gonna go. See ya. Top it back up, not right to the top, because it will reduce a bit more. If you've got quite thick oil in there, you need to leave them to settle a bit, whereas that, I can see, there's no air in there. Put the bladder on, screw the cap on. Might get a little leakage on there, it's not a problem. And then push your shock shaft up and it should push it back out. Like that. Spring on, spring retainer, good to go. As if by magic, <laughs> I've already fitted the rears. They're all the same on this. Sometimes the fronts will be different to the rears, but they are all uh, the same for this build. So the rest of it now is getting all the chassis together, um, sorting the steering out. It's just all putting screws and stuff in. There's nothing technical with that. So I'm just gonna get all that done off camera and then you're gonna see it as a, a roller. There it is, got some, just some temporary wheels. They actually look really good, but there it is. And it feels silky smooth as well. Feels really good. Suspension's looking good. A bit softer at the front and I've put some um, preloaders at the rear like it shows you. I've not put the little thin ones on the front, but that's something we can set up once it's done. Just waiting on a servo. I'm going to get a decent servo in there rather than throwing one of my cheap ones in. Get it dialed in on the electronics. And that means only one thing the body now i am aware that this body doesn't fit perfectly now slide it over you can't really see because it's not cut yet but the wheelbase on the chassis is slightly too long so you have to bring the um, bring the wheels in a bit now i've seen rc kicks has done a build on this and he i think he showed you how to uh, bring the wheels in or at least how he did it so i'm going to go and have a look at that i'll leave a link to that video as well i'm putting this body on with magnetic mounts. So I don't know if it's more of a thing if you use the actual supplied um, body mounts, whether it makes it worse. So build wasn't too bad. I don't get why Tamiya give you this really nice FRP chassis that I've got loads of greasy fingerprints over. And then basically give you a load of wood screws to fit it together. It just doesn't look great. Hex hardware, like in a darker color would have been really good. I'm sure you can buy the stuff to do it, but nice FRP chassis wood screws. <laughs>I'm sat here with this in front of me with a bit of a smug look on my face and you'll see why in a minute. So we've got the Copperhead 10 from Castle in there. That will take 4S. 4S though on this motor will take it up to 130, uh, well 129,000 RPM. It's only rated to 100,000 so we're definitely not running this 4S. That is very responsive and I don't think, I'm not sure the BEC set to as high as you can go on that and that'll take 8.4 volts so we're gonna have to check that. And she sounds super smooth as well. <laughs>
I have done the lip of the spoiler like a, um, a semi-gloss black. It looks so good. If you are a Tamiya purist and you haven't clicked off yet, don't worry, I have got the original wheels and I've uh, colour matched the wheels uh, with that bright gun metal as well. And it looks really good with these wheels on. Just think it looks better with these. That's the vision I had was to do it as like a, a slam street drift Porsche. Completely away from what most people have done with the uh, 45th anniversaries. I know most of you approve of this though, that clean look without the body post sticking through. I finished it a couple of days ago and I've just been sat looking at it. I've done the mod, I've done the wheelbase mod. I didn't do the rear because I was using magnetic mounts. I lined up the rear so it's pretty square. So all I've had to do is do the front. But I'm not gonna talk about it on here, but go and see Gav at RC Kicks. He's done like a full how-to for adjusting the wheelbase. It's too far forward stock. This is what I like about magnetic bodies. Apologies for those who wanted me to see this ragging it around a car park or seeing how fast it goes. I wanted to do a really nice build with this. That's why it's got the castle stuff in it and all set up like this. I don't want to destroy it. I just want to sit looking at it. <laughs> I don't know what people's uh, thoughts are going to be on this. Am I wrong doing this? Am I right? I don't know. It's awesome. <laughs> it's certainly different, eh? Yes. <laughs> Obviously not all that easy to control with these drift wheels, but not on this surface with all that power. This is definitely my favorite Tamiya build ever. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure there's some of you out there that are a little bit disappointed. I didn't run this on the stock wheels and tyres. Three reasons why I didn't. First reason is because I never planned this to be like a on-road car with on-road tyres. I always planned to give it this street sort of drift look. The second reason is this body is only held on by magnets. Anything really over sort of 30 mile an hour, the body's just going to come flying off. And this is definitely going to do over 30 mile an hour. And the third and final reason is because of this. <laughs> That would destroy my paint and with traction, destroy itself, I am sure. Like I said on the video, I think this is the nicest Tamiya I have ever built.